Big Guy Collections. Have you heard the news? I mean, I knew they were allegedly involved in a bribery scheme. And being that I don't know too much about bribery, I did not realize it sometimes entails extortion. According to newly uncovered evidence, these guys may have been applying big time force against a prominent Chinese official, getting him to pay up or else. <laughs> no joke. This is real. And it should be. And it just might be by the end of the weekend shaking the political universe. Now, first, the laptop. This is actually apart from the laptop. And we know about the laptop. Three years now, it's been verified as true and accurate by just about everybody. And inside that laptop, a lot of tawdry stuff, right? Oh, the pictures, the pictures. What's with this guy in the pictures? And then the incriminating emails and text messages, like 10% for the big guy, right? That's, uh, that's famous. That's legendary by now. However, got to consider this. I think it's incriminating, okay? But Hunter actually did not write that email. One of his partners did. They're obviously talking about the president, and Hunter seems in on it. He's CC'd on all this stuff, but he actually didn't write that. There's also this, which Hunter did write, uh, complaining that he has to give 50% of his salary to his father. He's complaining to uh, Naomi Biden, which is either his niece or his daughter. I forgot, but... Um, you could say, well, that's just Hunter being a jerk. He's just piping off. I mean, he's talking to a family member. I actually believe that he probably had to give his father a big 50% commission of everything. But uh, maybe he is just mouthing off. Yesterday from the House Ways and Means Committee, this text message, this thing is more incriminating than anything in that laptop because, well, Hunter is directly pressuring a Chinese official to give him money, and he's threatening that he's going to unleash his father, at that point, the former vice president of the United States, on those guys. They're going to take revenge if they don't get their money. It's incredible, and he says he's sitting there right in the room. Uh, I am sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment has not been fulfilled. Commitment, everybody seems to understand that that means Money. Where's the rest of our money? Next, please. Uh, the tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand. And now means tonight. Again, like a collections agent. All right. Next, please. Uh, and Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, uh, what's going to happen? <laughs> I'll make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge that you will regret not following my direction. Huh. I will. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father. And yeah, that was all to Henry Zhao, prominent businessman, CCP uh, party member. This guy. <laughs> Pay or else. And this is in July of 2017. According to the House Oversight Committee, the Chinese already paid the Bidens uh, between one and three million dollars earlier that year. And they split it up among various family members. Hunter Biden's lawyers have actually confirmed that part of the story. So Hunter and his father uh, were all fired up and got the attention of Mr. Zhao because two days later, it looks like everything's under control. We have this from the laptop. Two days later, uh, my family sends their best wishes and looks forward to playing some golf when the director has time. Oh, very respectful. And what does Mr. Zhao say in return? Best regards to you, Jim, the president's brother, and the VP. Wow. So uh, this blows out of the water the whole uh, Joe Biden never took to talk to Hunter about business, doesn't it? Remember when Joe told us that? Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And so how do you know? How do you know? Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. He is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question, why is he on the phone with a foreign leader trying to intimidate a foreign leader, if that's what happened? That appears what happened. You should be looking at Trump. Trump's doing this because he knows I'll beat him like a drum. And he's using the abuse of power and every element of the, the uh, presidency to try to do something to smear me. Remember that campaign of decency, huh? I'm a decent man. Vote for me, damn it. 
Well, this uh, he's lying, obviously. In my opinion, the evidence seems to suggest that he was wi lying wildly, wildly, because, and now this text message, wow. All right, so um, this had to be asked at the White House, okay? It took Newsmax correspondent James Rosen to get the ball rolling. Nobody was asking about it. When it was James's turn, he pounced. The House Ways and Means Committee yesterday released documents, Fine. their authenticity nowhere challenge. Uh, that included a July 2017 WhatsApp message sent by Hunter Biden to Henry Zhao, a Chinese Communist Party official, which stated in its entirety, and I quote, I am sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand and now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father, unquote. So just a couple of questions about this. First, does this not undermine uh, the president's claim during the 2020 campaign and the reaffirmations of that claim by his two press secretaries since then that he never once discussed his son's overseas business dealings with him? No, and I'm not going to comment further on this. We're going to, we're, hang on, hang on, not, hang on. James, James, let me just, let me save you some, no, let me save, let me say, let me save you some breath. If you're going to ask about this, I am not addressing, I don't, I know you do more than I'd like you to have. I am not going to address this issue from this podium. I'm just not going to do it. All right. I'm not Thank going you. to do Where it. Was the Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. <laughs> wow. That's it. Just going to, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just going to, we're just going to pretend it's not an issue. Well, it is an issue. All right. So that's actually the deputy press secretary somehow, Kirby. And then it was Corrine Jean-Pierre's turn. And uh, I mentioned James got the ball rolling and the reporters started looking at each other and saying, yeah, what about this text message in the New York Times, CBS News? They all jumped in. Kirby wouldn't answer James's question, though. Are you going to answer the question? I mean, not, not a reasonable question to ask when the President of the United States was involved, as this message seems to suggest, in some sort of a coercive conversation for business dealings by a son. Is that something, if he wasn't, then maybe you should tell us. So that. here's the thing, I, and I appreciate the question. I believe my colleague uh, at the White House Council uh, has answered this question already, has dealt with this, has uh, uh, made it very clear. I just don't have anything to share outside of what my colleagues have shared. Uh, and so I would refer you to him and the, D and the DOJ. Just not going to comment from here. I will, all, what I can tell you is I know that my colleague has dealt with this. He, he uh, addressed this at the White House Council. I just don't have anything else to share. I just, I just answered the question. I just answered the question. Yes or no, was the president involved in the I just answered. Stephen, Stephen, I just answered the question. I just said, I just... This isn't, it's not up to you how I answer the question. I just answer the question by telling you my colleagues at the White House Council has dealt with this, and I would refer you to them. Go ahead. Karine, can you just remind us what your colleague said from the White House Council so we have it? I would, I, would, I would refer you to them, and they will share their statement with all of you. All right. From that and it goes on like this. Stated. Denial. Uh, not even a denial. I already talked about it. I'm not going to talk about it. We already talked about it. Talk to that guy. We're not talking about it. Uh, but reporters are talking about it, and that's interesting. This hasn't happened before in the history of the Biden administration, in the two-and-a-half-year history of the Biden administration. They never actually seriously inquired about any of this stuff. So this is significant. It's also significant that we're learning, well, that Justice Department officials seem to be playing defense for Hunter Biden. Now, the uh, House Ways and Means Committee introduced us to this Leslie Wolf an assistant U.S. attorney uh, in Delaware who was part of the team investigating Hunter Biden and his, and his tax problems, okay? So she was playing defense for the Bidens, it looks like, and everybody wants to know about her, so we went to Google. Well, this thing came up. I've never seen this before. It looks like the results below are changing quickly. Uh, were they scrubbing her internet history? What was happening here? I've heard of big tech trying to protect Democrats before. 
Um, and it looks to me like she is a Democrat. Let's go through her resume, what we're able to find out. 48 years old, graduated from Columbia Law School, worked for Ballard Spar. That's a very Democrat firm. And she actually donated not much money, but some to Act Blue, totally liberal organization. And her, uh, her husband works at uh, UPenn School of Medicine. And um, look, I mean, she might be biased and... Uh, that's kind of a problem, and, well, let's go through what the whistleblowers are saying. AUSA Wolf start, stated that they would not allow a physical search warrant on Hunter Biden. Assistant U.S. Attorney Wolf interjected and said she did not want to ask about the big guy and stated she did not want to ask questions about dad, meaning Biden. AUSA Wolf had simply reached out to Hunter Biden's defense counsel and told him about the storage unit. Once again, ruining our chance to get evidence before being destroyed, manipulated, or concealed. You see, the investigators actually wanted to, they knew about this storage unit. They wanted to search it. And before they got a warrant, she allegedly told Hunter's lawyer that it exists and we know about it. So maybe you want to, who knows? There were multiple, uh, there were multiple times where Leslie Wolf said that she did not want to ask questions about dad. And dad was kind of how we referred to him. We referred to Hunter Biden's father, you know, as dad. Okay. On October 21st, 2021, AUSA Wolf, Leslie Wolf told us it would get us into hot water if we interview the president's grandchildren. Yeah, I can actually see that. Very reluctant to uh, take on the Bidens, but man, they go in literally guns blazing into Mar-a-Lago. Again, this is all uh, testimony from uh, IRS whistleblowers as told to the House Ways and Means Committee. I think it's a big deal. There are questions for the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice was turning off this investigation every opportunity they could, it looks like. And A.G. Garland, what did he do? self-righteously defended the institution. We uh, understand that some have chosen to attack the integrity of the Justice Department as components and its employees by claiming that we do not treat like cases alike. Uh, this constitutes an attack on an institution that is essential to American democracy and essential to the safety of the American people. Wow saying that if you're critical of the DOJ, you're attacking democracy, attacking American safety. That right there is an attack on democracy, I think. That actually is dangerous rhetoric. And why are we losing trust in, say, the FBI? Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, you know, remember when they tried to throw the election in 2016? We also had this from the Attorney General. You've all heard me say many times that we make our cases based on the facts and the law. These are not just words. These are what we live by. They are the foundation of the way we make these decisions. Yeah, oh, we just don't believe that anymore. And by the way, that woman off to the right there, that is, we believe, uh, Lisa Monaco. And she might be the real muscle there at the Department of Justice. She's the Deputy Attorney General. And maybe, excuse me, Joe doesn't talk to the Attorney General all that much, but maybe he talks to the Deputy. Here they are spotted. Um, it looks like in the Rose Garden uh, not too long ago. Pretty wild that Hunter Biden got to go to the White House state dinner last night for the prime minister of India. There he is just having a great time with the beautiful people. And as I watched him last night, and we know that he's about to plead guilty to those misdemeanors, although they should be felonies, and we know everything else about this guy. There he is having the time of his life. And what did they put the Trump children through? Let's put this side by side, huh? There he is at a party. And what did they bring Donald Trump Jr. to Capitol Hill for, right? Remember this nonsense? What they put him through? They didn't protect him, did they? They tried to get him. An honest businessman, a good guy, not a criminal. Treated like one as soon as he went to Washington. So unbelievably unfair. And we all know it. And you can all see it.